Hello folks, this is Mike. Thanks for tuning in. Well, winter is over with here on the Texas Gulf Coast, and I've just finished mowing my yard for the first time this spring. And to do that, I've used my new lawnmower. This is the Craftsman Model M230. It's a 21-inch, self-propelled, front-wheel drive, variable-speed lawnmower. Now, what I'd like to do today is show you how we assemble it, how we set it up for use, and operate it. Then we're going to mow with it a bit, and, of course, I'm going to give you my opinion at the end, and I'm going to tell you what I think are the pros and the cons of this mower. So please continue watching, and we'll get started. So first, let's look at what it has. Now, we've already mentioned that it is a 21-inch, self-propelled, front-wheel drive mower with variable speed. But let's quickly take a look at some of the other features. Now, it has 11-inch high wheels in the back. There are six-position more height adjusters. Max cutting height is three and three-quarters of an inch. It has a Briggs & Stratton 725 EXI engine with 163 cc's and seven and a quarter foot-pounds of torque. The oil is add, don't change. It also has a cartridge air filter instead of the older style foam. There's also a cleaning port on the deck and it features a two-year warranty. And this is what it has not. It doesn't have electric start, nor does it have a pace control system or a double cutting blade. And it can't be stored in the upright position. Now it is made, or assembled rather, in the USA in Tupelo, Mississippi, but the predominance of the parts come from global sources. Notice on the box here that it says it's 81 pounds and they suggest a team lift. Now, when I was a young man, I would have just jerked this out of the SUV and put it on the ground. <laughs> These days I need a bit more bat friendly approach. So I've asked the love of my life to help me take it out and we're going to just set it on the ground here. Once it's on the ground, it's no problem. Now once you have the box on the ground and you've got the top open, uh, just remember that you don't really need to try and deadlift this mower out of the box. That is unless maybe you're an extreme bodybuilder and you need the practice. Uh, you can be kind to your knees and your back by simply slitting down the corners on one end. And if this worries you a bit, uh, remember that they actually recommend this procedure in the manual. So then you can just drop the flap on the ground, remove the packing, and the accessories. The Ziploc bag contains your quick start guide, your manuals, and your warranty info. Uh, there's a pre-measured bottle of 30 weight motor oil and also your side discharge attachment. The mower will now just simply roll right out of the box. Now, this is the rear collection bag and its metal support frame. We'll just set those aside for right now. Obviously, the handle is shipped in the folded position. But if you'll notice, it is also shipped with the ends of the handle recessed down into the deck area. Now there are two hand screws at the base of the handle. You can remove these and set them aside. Simply pull the handle up and there will be another set of mounting holes. And you can just reinsert and tighten the screws. To completely unfold the handle, you will have to remove these bolts uh, with the gray handles. Once you get these out, uh, notice that there are several adjustment holes and you can either set the handle straight or at a slight angle. Notice that the bolt has a square area behind the head uh, to lock it into place when you seat it in the adjustment slot. The oil filter cap is right here under the starter pool. And the SAE30 small engine oil provided with the motor is pre-measured and you should be able to pour the whole bottle in the mower. The machine is shipped dry, so if you have oil in the crankcase or gas in the tank, you may want to question that with your seller. Also of note, uh, Craftsman says you never have to change the oil. Just add as necessary. After filling, be sure to check the dipstick and make sure you're not over or under filled. Now once that's done, you can slowly pull out your starting cord and put it in the uh, retainer on the side of the handle. Uh, then tighten the thumb screw until it's tight. The tie wraps on the cables are shipped loose, so you can position your wiring where you want it and then tighten the cables and even snip off the ends if you wish. 
And of course the front and back wheel height is adjustable using these levers. There are only two levers. One controls both back wheels and the other adjusts both front wheels at the same time. We add regular gas to the tank, but just make sure that you're not using E85 gas or, or, or a gas that has more than 10% ethanol. I just put in around a quarter of a tank uh, right now until I make sure it'll start. And I'm really not used to this. Uh, there's usually a choke or a primer on most of these small engines, but uh, these new Briggs and Stratton's don't have those things. It's supposed to be just a one pull start. So let's see if that works. And wow! <laughs> it started on the first pull. Before we use the motor, let's look at the variable speed control. Of course, the further you pull back on the handle, the faster it will go. Now, if it goes too fast or too slow at its maximum setting, there is a tension control to adjust that. So you tighten the thumb wheel to add speed and loosen it to slow it down. Now, let's assemble the bag. The smooth black plastic part is the bottom. The end of the frame should be at the top of the bag or it won't stretch properly. Of course, the handle should be on the outside where you can grab it. Now just go around the perimeter of the frame and clip it in. And trust me, it can be a struggle to get the clips to stretch far enough to fit over the frame. I used a flat bladed screwdriver uh, to help a bit. Once it's assembled, lift up the back gate and the metal protrusions on the side of the bag will seat in this flat recessed area right in front of the bottom mounting bolts for the handle. Now the gate will seat over the bag and you're ready to go. The mower has three modes. There's bag collection, uh, a mulch mode, and the side discharge mode. Now to switch over to side discharge, you just lift this plastic piece and snap your adapter into place. And of course you would leave the bag off here. Now that we have the mower set up, let's go ahead and cut some grass. And again, the mower started on the first pull. I mowed most of the yard in the mulch mode, and this simply means that you leave off the bag and the side discharge adapter. And this is my preferred setting. My bag usually just sits on the shelf in the mower shed and never gets used. I have a quarter acre yard, and with this San Augustine grass, you have to stop six or eight times during the course of a lawn mowing to dump the bag. Now San Augustine has wide blades and it's very thick and the pros recommend that you should cut it at a higher level for good healthy grass. I set the mower height on level 3 which means the handles are pointed straight up. Now I know according to the experts for my type of grass this is really too low but I'm testing out the lawnmower here. Then I adjusted the forward speed to a fast walking pace and it never faltered or choked out. It was a real pleasure to mow with. I was also able to maintain speed. Also notice that there are simply no clippings. I don't know how these mulch mowers do it, but that grass simply just seems to disappear. So I was very happy with this function. Now things changed a bit when I used the bag. For the most part it worked fine, but when the bag started to get full with this heavy grass, the weight transferred to the rear and the drive wheels would lose traction and start spinning. Now my lawn boy was rear wheel drive and this never happened. What did happen was that I always had trouble telling when it was time to change the bag. Then when the grass under the mower built up and had no place to go, it would simply choke out the mower and it died. Then there would be a big pile of clippings under the mower for me to deal with. So there's no perfect system. I saw a couple of complaints in online reviews that at its lowest height setting, the mower would scout the yard and even leave bare spots. So I tried this, and at my lowest setting, in my grass, I really didn't have much scalping, probably because I have such a level yard, but the mower would constantly die out. I moved it up to level two, and the mower performed much better, but my yard looked like it had a military haircut. Now that we're finished mowing, uh, let's try out the cleaning port. Now I noticed that some clippings had collected in the top of mine, so you want to make sure to tap those out. It's a quick connect fitting, so it's easy to remove from the mower, and you just simply screw it onto your water hose, and reconnect it, and then turn on your water, and start the engine. I'd let it run for about two or three minutes, and that should do the job. 
Also, when you disconnect the hose, be sure to point it away from the mower to protect your engine. So let's talk about the mower's pros and its cons. My likes and my dislikes. Now, the first thing I like is the one pull start feature. Man, this thing is amazing. I probably cranked it 15, 20 times during the course of making this video and mowing my grass, and it has started first time every time. Amazing. The second thing I like is having the Briggs and Stratton engine. I've had a number of these engines over the years. I've always had good luck with them. They're reliable, they long lasting. I love the operation of this mower in the mulch mode. Uh, it was just outstanding. Even though I intentionally mowed my grass too low for the type of grass and the thickness, it, it mulched flawlessly. There was absolutely no clippings left <laughs> when I was done. As good or better than any mulching lawnmower I've ever used. Next I like the variable speed feature. Mainly because when I was mowing the grass, I was able to hold speed, especially in the mulch mode. There wasn't periods where it would slow down or speed up unexpectedly, unless I hit maybe a really high patch of grass. So I think that's a great feature. So now let's talk about the cons or what I don't like about using the mower. And first and foremost is using this bag. And I think I'm justified here a bit because when the bag gets about half to three quarters full, the front wheels lose traction some, and you really have to stop and change the bag. That just means you're going to change the bag more often. This may not be a deal breaker for you, but it does bring up another point. If you go to Lowe's website, you'll see that they say this mower is best suited for flat terrain, which is what we have lots of here around Houston, Texas. <laughs> So I didn't have much problem here, but if you have a yard that's hilly or sloped, you may experience this weight transfer and loss of traction issue going uphill. Something for you to think about and evaluate. Now my last dislike is trying to mow with this mower at the lowest height setting. It's totally impractical, and I agree with these online comments that say it simply just scalps the yard. Or if you have San Augustine like mine, the bottom of the deck sits on top of the grass and the wheels just spin. <laughs> and goes nowhere. <laughs> so if you're used to mowing this way, and if you like to mow the lowest level, with this mower, I think you need to consider bumping up to level two. And I think you'll probably get results that you're normally used to. So what's the bottom line? Well, I like the mower. And I think for my type of use and my type of yard, uh, it's a really good fit for me, and I think it's a keeper. I think I'm going to get many years of good service out of this mower. But if you have a hilly or slope yard, or if you're worried about the frequent bag changing issue, you might want to consider a rear wheel drive mower. Well, folks, that's going to do it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope it's been some help to you. Feel free to leave us comments or questions, and I'll get back to you. Also, be sure to go below and like our video, and because we've got more great tool and product reviews coming, woodworking and DIY projects, be sure to click that subscribe button so you won't miss anything, and don't forget to ring that bell. And until next time, thanks for watching.